Hello and welcome to The Eye. I'm Esther. These are the headlines. The Nagaland government on Wednesday extended the lockdown in the state till June 30. It also empowered the district COVID task forces to work out relaxations as per the situation in their respective districts. According to the state government, Nagaland is witnessing a drought-like situation due to delayed and erratic rains with 68,662 hectares of June fields in 915 villages affected. After black, white and yellow fungus, a COVID-19 survivor in Madhya Pradesh's indoor has been diagnosed with a green fungus infection. Now for the news in details. According to the state government, Nagaland is witnessing a drought-like situation due to delayed and erratic rains. 70% of the state farmers are involved in June cultivation, but with hardly any rain since December 2020 till April 2021, the agriculture and horticulture crops under June have been adversely affected, leading to poor germination and wilting of standing crops. The area affected by deficient rains amounts to 68,662 hectares of June fields in 915 villages, affecting in almost all the districts. Terrace rice cultivation upland and wet terrace rice cultivation has also been affected due to the deficient monsoon rains in all the districts, causing delay in land preparation and sowing. If the same trend continues till July, then the farmers may fail to undertake cultivation activities. The rice production of the state, which was 5.51 lakh megatons for the year 2020 to 21, is now anticipated to reduce to 1.66 lakh MT during the current year, a reduction of 70% if the present dry spell continues. A press release from the Office of the Agriculture Production Commissioner stated that the shortage of rainfall has not only affected the production of normal seasonal crops, but has also affected commercial crops like large cardamom, fruits and vegetables, and other livestock such as fisheries, piggery and others. Adding more to the woes, the situation in the agricultural scenario was further aggravated through infestation by fall army worm during the last week of March affecting 3,048.45 hectares of maize crop covering 334 villages. Despite timely intervention by the departments, the FAW infestation could not be completely neutralized, the release stated. After a meeting with the APC and all the agri and allied departments, it was decided to distribute seeds and planting materials for re-sowing in the affected June fields. However, even after this action, it was not able to achieve the desired result due to shortfall of rain. To take stock of the situation, the Chief Minister convened a meeting on June 15 with all concerned officials, citing that the damage is going to be huge, with anticipated crop production loss up to 70%, and assistance from the government of India was required to mitigate the effects of deficient rains in the state. In this regard, a core committee of agri and allied departments headed by the APC has been formed to monitor and review the ground situation, timely as per the reports received from the field. In continuation of the earlier direction, all the officers of agri and allied department have been directed by the APC to remain in station and closely monitor the ground situation. A 34-year-old COVID-19 survivor in Madhya Pradesh's indoor has been diagnosed with a green fungus infection. According to Dr. Ravi Dosi, head of the Department of Chest Diseases, Aurobindo Institute of Medical Sciences, the man who had recovered from COVID-19 underwent a test on suspicion that he had contracted the dreaded black fungus infection. According to Apurva Tiwari, District Data Manager, Health Department Indoor, this is possibly the first green fungus case in the country. The patient was airlifted to Mumbai on a chartered plane on Monday. Aspergillosis is an infection caused by aspergillus, a common mold that lives indoors and outdoors. Most people breathe in aspergillus pores every day without getting sick. However, people with weakened immune systems or lung diseases are at a higher risk of developing health problems due to aspergillus. The types of health problems caused by aspergillus include allergic reactions, lung infections, and infections in other organs. According to doctors, 
more research was needed on whether the nature of green fungus is infection in people who have recovered from COVID-19 is different from other patients. Though the number of those getting diagnosed with black fungus has been high, white and yellow fungus infections have been rare. A team of Kohima police apprehended the person accused of involvement in the burglary case as administers Hill Baptist Higher Secondary School in Kohima on June 15. Cash amounting to Rs. 1,52,390 was recovered from the possession of the accused, updates stated. The accused person has been identified as one Daniel Pomp, 22 years, of Yachim village in Longling district and stated to have his present address at Paira Colony, Burma Camp in Dimapur. In this connection, a case has been registered at South Police Station for further investigation, update stated. The Delhi Police on Wednesday arrested a judo coach identified as Subash in connection with the murder of national wrestler Sagar Dhankar at National Capital's Chhatrasal Stadium last month. This is the 11th arrest made in this case, the prime accused in which is wrestler and two-time Olympic medalist Sushil Kumar. Subhash was arrested by the Delhi Police Crime Branch from the national capital, a senior official said. The case pertains to the death of Dhankar after being allegedly assaulted by Kumar and his associates on the intervening night of May 4 and 5. The 23-year-old's friends Sonu and Amit Kumar sustained injuries in the alleged Assault Sushil Kumar, who fled from Delhi after the incident, was arrested on May 23 from the city's outer Mundkai area along with co accused Ajay Kumar. He was sent to six day police custody by a court, which was later extended by four more days. On June 2, the Olympian was sent to judicial custody for nine days, with a court rejecting the Delhi police plea for three more days of custodial interrogation. On June 11, Kumar's judicial custody was extended till June 25. His face in charges of murder, culpable homicide, and kidnapping. The Delhi police have described Kumar as the man culprit and mastermind and claim to have electronic evidence in which the Olympian and his associates can be seen assaulting Tanka with sticks. This is an apparent reference to a video which surfaced on social media in which Kumar and his men can be seen beating up a man purported to be Dhankar. The video the Delhi police have claimed was shot so that Kumar could continue to maintain his fear among fellow and junior wrestlers. Moving further to more news, the Nagaland government on Wednesday extended the lockdown in the state till June 30. It also empowered the district COVID task forces to work out relaxations as per the situation in the respective districts. Stating that the situation is improving but the state is still not out of the woods, lockdown would have to continue, said government spokesperson on COVID-19 MLA Monlo Mokikon in a tweet. The legislator said the decision to extend lockdown was taken at a review meeting of the State High Power Committee on Wednesday. Naglin went into total lockdown on May 14, restricting all activities except for essential services and movement of goods transport. The state reported 101 new cases and three deaths as on Tuesday, taking the total case load to 23,854 and 445 deaths. As on June 15, a total of 369,238 people in the state have been vaccinated, out of which 54,875 were administered the second dose and 311,235 have taken the first dose. Union Minister Ravi Shankar Prasad on Wednesday said Twitter has deliberately chosen not to comply with the new social media and intermediary guidelines even as officials said the company will lose its legal protection from penal action for third-party content over the non-compliance. There are numerous queries arising as to whether Twitter is entitled to safe harbor provision. However, the simple fact of the matter is that Twitter has failed to comply with the intermediary guidelines that came into effect from the 26th of May, for it was given multiple opportunities to comply with the same. However, it has deliberately chosen the path of non-compliance, Prasa Tron on Twitter. Prasa defended the guidelines and said that they were brought to counter the menace of fake news. The culture of India varies like its large geography in certain scenarios with the amplification of social media even a small spark can cause a fire, especially with the menace of fake news. This was one of the objectives of bringing the intermediary guidelines, he said. Prasad called it astounding that Twitter, which portrays itself as the flag bearer of free speech, 
has chosen the path of deliberate defiance when it comes to the intermediary guidelines. He hid out at the company for arbitrarily deciding which post to mark as manipulated media. The police unit of Nagaland's youngest and the 12th district, Noklak, got its very first logo, emblem, motto and sobriquet. Speaking to Hornbill TV, the first superintendent of police, Dr. Pritpal Kaur, expressed elation and said it was a rare opportunity to be part of such an insignia. She informed that the proposal was sent to the Director General of Police for approval before it was decided. While the motto reads as honor, integrity and service, the emblem with its colors signify shield of protection and service. The colors depict sacrifice, foundation, harmony and peace with the eagle symbolizing that the sky is the limit. A team of the 12th Battalion National Disaster Response Force carried out a plantation drive in view of Akhil Bharatiya Vriksha Vropan at Regimental School, 4th Battalion NAP, Thizama Village in Kohima. It was carried out in collaboration with the Regimental School staff under the supervision of P. N. Singh, Deputy Commandant, 12th Battalion, NDRF. During the drive, fruit-bearing plants, medicinal plants, as well as non-fruit-bearing plants were planted. Around 300 saplings were planted during the event. The program will further be carried out within Naglin in the future. Months after being closed due to COVID-induced lockdown, entry to the historic Taj Mahal reopened on Wednesday. The Archaeological Survey of India's ASI Superintending Archaeologist of Agra Circle, Vasan Kumar Swankar, informed on Tuesday, Taj Mahal, among other ASI protected monuments, will reopen from tomorrow. Swankar also mentioned that strict COVID protocols will be followed, entry will be allowed only via online tickets, and no one will be allowed to enter without masks, he said. A restriction of only 650 people has also been imposed by the Agra District Magistrate, Prabhu and Singh. No more than 650 people will be allowed inside Taj Mahal at a given time and teams will be deputed to monitor the crowd at all times, he said. He further informed ANI that only five tickets can be booked via one phone number. A vaccination camp for the workers of the Taj Mahal was also set up on Tuesday, a day before the opening of the historic monument. Acting on a complaint lodged by a doctor about the theft of personal documents and cash from his residence, North Police Station of Kohima arrested one person identified as one Aklas, 22 years of age, and a resident of Kasaba Dantala in West Bengal from Dimapur Airport on June 14. During investigation, cash amounting to 2,71,700 was recovered from his possession. Based on the revelation by the accused, the stolen documents were also recovered. Further, it was also ascertained that the accused was working as a laboratory technician at a clinic run by the victim. The accused was about to board a flight from Dimapur to Kolkata when he was arrested, updates stated. Amid the pandemic, the sacrifices of all frontline workers, healthcare workers and administration goes unnoticed. To acknowledge this, state legislators from Nagaland, Nikki Salik Kire, Nibakruno and Tovioto Aimi, along with Toyang Chang on the drums, have sung and dedicated a song titled Jesus Now More Than Ever to all the frontline and health workers, including the administration, who have tirelessly rendered their services. Let's have a look at our legislators serenading those who have sacrificed their lives. on the waters and he raised up Jairus daughter he fed the hungry cleansed the leopard but we need Jesus now more than ever Jesus now Jesus now Sailing in stormy weather, all his children should get together. For we need Jesus now more than ever. He touched the lame man and he started walking. He touched the dumb man. 
And they started talking They put their lives all back together But we need Jesus now more than ever Sailing in stormy weather, all his children should get together. For we need Jesus now more than ever. In the book of Revelation, read about the tribulation. Only Jesus' blood can give protection. Jesus now, Jesus now, more than ever. We are sailing in stormy weather. All his children should get together. Sailing in stormy weather, all his children should get together. For we need Jesus now more than ever. For oh, we need, for oh, we need, yes we need, yes we need Jesus now. Well, they do say that music heals. Much appreciation to the legislators for lending their gift of music. That's all for tonight's English News Bulletin. Do subscribe to our channel and also follow Hornbill TV Official on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube and Instagram. I'm Esther. Keep watching Hornbill TV.